हेलो एंड नमस्ते इन कंटिन्यूशन विद द नॉन नॉन लिनियर प्रोग्रामिंग प्रॉब्लम्स आफ्टर द डिटेल डिस्कशन ऑन द लैग्रेंज मल्टीप्लाई मेथड वी आर मूविंग अहेड विद द प्रॉब्लम्स नाउ वी आर डीलिंग हियर विद द वन इक्वालिटी कंस्ट्रेंट काइंड ऑफ क्वेश्चंस नाउ फॉर वन इक्वालिटी कंस्ट्रेंट सपोज वी आर सेइंग दैट एफ इज ऑब्जेक्टिव फंक्शन जी इज द कंस्ट्रेंट एंड लैम्डा इज द लैग्रेंज मल्टीप्लायर देन वी आर फॉर्मिंग द लैग्रेंज लैग्रेंज फंक्शन और लैग्रेंज फंक्शन एज एफ माइनस लैम्डा टाइम्स जी Again, solving this L with respect to x1, L with respect to x2, L with, L with respect to lambda, and equating them with zero, we will be, we'll be getting the value of x1, x2, and lambda. That would get formed a stationary point or a point. X0 is equal to x1 comma x2, which is a point of maxima, or might be minima. It depend upon this matrix. And whenever we have got only two variables and the one constraint, we'll be getting this is as I have told you last section. This is nothing but n plus one. So as n is the number of variables, number of variables here, and now in this case we are considering the number of variables as x one and x two. At that time, this delta will go as delta three plus sorry, delta is two plus one. That is two variables plus one. So it it becomes delta three. So again, is if you you can you can easily check that this matrix this is a determinant which is known as a delta three. and this is what we have formed it i have told you already in the last section please follow the i button to reach to the section now if delta 3 is greater than equals to 0 z is max maxima and if delta 3 is less than equals to 0 at the point then it is going to be minima let us let us find out and explore this in detail with this now in this cut particular this is the formula which i have given you here it's nothing but for the x1 and x2 two formula two variables if we have the another one more variable so obviously we'll be having one more column as well as one more row over here so what would be the first element it's do g upon do x3 and similarly the other things will fall in line everywhere here so this is what you can easily check this out and form this lagrangian or you can say a hessian matrix with this three now let us say say this as a question use the method of lagrangian multipliers to solve the following nlp problem does the solution maximize or minimize the objective function this is the question now this is if you observe here it's optimize that means what we have to take a decision whether this z at that particular point is going to be max or minimum at that particular point now again we have got g as a first or you can say only one constraint which is again of equality so l x comma lambda is f minus lambda into g of x this can be written, written as along with if you can check it this is the function f or objective function minus lambda into the g which is x1 plus x2 plus x3 minus of 20 as the g now again if you observe here do l upon do x1 that is 4x1 plus 10 minus lambda is equals to 0 if you observe in this lambda uh, in this l over here if you are talking about the x1 so this is we have got the term 1 2 3 these are the three terms which contains the value or uh, the variable x1 so this is the differentiation we are going ahead with now this do l upon do x1 is equals to 0 will be going ahead with this and we will be having this particular equation or you can say that x1 we can have it as lambda minus 10 by 4 similarly if we we'll go ahead with do l upon do x2 that is differentiation of l with respect to x2 and equating with 0 again if we we'll observe here in this l you can check x2 is here x2 is here and x2 is here so 1 2 3 terms or 2x2 my plus 8 minus lambda is equals to 0 equating with 0 we are getting x2 in terms of lambda minus 8 by 2 same thing with do l upon do x3 it's when again we have to note this down or consider the terms which are having x3 over here if you'll observe here and this is x3 over here so again three terms and equating with this we are getting x3 in terms of this now differentiating this l with respect to lambda we are going to get this particular g with the negative sign but if you are going ahead with the uh, this with the negative sign but it is equals to 0 so we can make it positive now this is nothing but x1 plus x2 plus x3 minus 20 is 0 that means x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equals to 20 now we if you observe here x1 is there in terms of lambda x2 is also in terms of lambda 
and x3 is also we have got it in terms of lambda so if you are taking these values and putting it here in this equation we are going to get the value of lambda is equals to 30 so we have got the first value of lambda is equals to 30 and now you can easily check we have got x1 x2 x3 in terms of lambda so if we we'll put m lambda equals to 30 in each of them we are going to get it the value of this x1 as 5 x2 as 11 and x3 is as 4 so you can easily check with this i have i've written the statement also if you wanted to uh, keep this as the reference uh, afterwards then we have got the value or you can say the point at which x0 x1 x2 x3 is equals to x0 5 11 4 this is the point at which maxima or minima might exist might exist so we have to check for that to put to prove the sufficient condition whether the extreme point solution uh, solution gives the maxima or minima value of the objective function we need to evaluate n minus 1 principal minus as follows so n minus 1 principal values now what is the n n is this is 3 minus 1 that is 2 because we have got x1 x2 x3 three number of variables so we have to calculate two number of minus two number of minus this is very important as i have told you in the last session that i will be uh, uh, explaining you everything in detail along with the example now moving ahead delta 3 is coming out to be in this way and if you'll observe here optimize so i have I've kept this optimize the function over here purposely so that i can explain you how to get these values now this zero is as it is so we have kept it as it is now do g upon do x1 so we are differentiating g with respect to x1 which is coming out to be 1 similarly do g upon do x2 it's 1 because we have got it 1 1 1 in g of x then moving ahead so the same will be so whatever you have written here the same would be here in this first row and a first column so whatever we have got first row the same thing we have to put it in the first column moving ahead with this function or with this particular value it's do square f upon do x1 square so check this this is what z is nothing but f we have got this as f we are differentiating f with respect to x1 two times suppose we are differentiating f with respect to only once first so it is f x1 is equals to which is 4 x1 plus 10 because x1 we have got here 1 and 2 values only two terms then again we are differentiating this f x1 again with respect to x1 again so it gives us f x1 square which is coming out to be 4 a minus lambda times dou square g upon dou x1 now let me explain you that also suppose we are differentiating g with respect to x1 we have got it as 1 again if you are differentiating this 1 with respect to x1 we are going to get it as 0 because we do not have any square term in g or any combination of the terms in this g we are not going to get this part this part as some non-zero so we are getting every time here these values are zero and that's the reason we'll be getting only the values of dou square f upon dou x dou x and so on again so we have got it in this case here in this case we have just got it four now again if you we'll check it f with respect to x1 and x2 suppose we have taken it f with respect to x1 and now if we are differentiating this f with respect to x2 so we are going to get it as 0 because in this function we do not have any x2 present and hence we are going to get this as 0 again you can observe this very simple or very easily from this if we will observe the objective function there is no combination term present over here so obviously we do not have any value for this type of f x1 x2 f x2 x3 f x1 x3 and so on we do not have any combination term what do you mean by combination term like for example 10 x1 x2 or might be uh, 11 x2 x3 or any kind of this combination term here in the optimization function therefore we cannot get anything for this and we are going to get it only the value for this this is in this way you can calculate this determinant the value or you can say the numbers of this determinants we got it as 0 1 1 1 4 0 1 0 2 if we we'll calculate the value of this determinant we are going to get it as minus of 6 so we got the value of this determinant as minus of 6 now moving ahead with the delta 4 as i have told you we have to find out two uh, minus of this and that is also starting from delta 
थ्री माइनस वन बिकॉज इफ लो थ्री प्लस वन सो वी हैव टू कैलकुलेट हियर एन प्लस वन वी हैव गॉट इट हियर द डेल्टा एज फोर सॉरी डेल्टा थ्री प्लस वन दैट इज डेल्टा फोर डेल्टा फोर एंड डेल्टा थ्री वी नीड टू कैलकुलेट ओवर हियर सो वी हैव कैलकुलेटेड डेल्टा थ्री ओवर हियर वी गॉट इट एज माइनस सिक्स डेल्टा फोर ऑल्सो वी नीड टू कैलकुलेट इफ यू ऑब्जर्व हियर दिस दिस पर्टिकुलर डिटर्मिनेंट इज सेम एज वॉट वी हैव गॉट इट हियर now we have to do additional one row and one column that is for g with respect to x3 and then as i have told you as i have explained you this terms you are going to get it zeros only because we do not have any combination term similarly if you observe do square f upon do x cube so do square f upon do x3 square if you observe here we have got it here 3x3 square If you'll get this differentiation of this and this first differentiation, that is f x three, that we are going to get it six x three plus six. And if you are taking it x three square, we are going to get the value as six. That is what we have kept it here, and we have got the delta four as this value. Now, after solving this delta four, it's very simple to calculate the determinant of this delta four. Either you can go ahead with a calculator, or either you can go ahead with a simple uh, way, or otherwise. we can go ahead and calculate this this 4 by 4 by some transformation we know that the determinant of a matrix won't change because of the transformation happened or any transformation on the matrix therefore we can have this this element and this element zero using the transformation c2 uh, sorry c3 minus c2 and c4 minus c2 that will gives us these two elements zeros and then after um, taking the row wise determinant of this matrix we will be getting the value as 48 so we got the value of delta 4 as 48 and now if you observe here since the sign of delta 3 and delta 4 one is negative one is positive we will be getting the extreme point of that that point and what is that that is known as a local maxima of the point and what's the value of that z is nothing but 280 Uh, one how how to calculate the 281 for this particular uh, case you can easily check that this is a optimization function in the optimization function keep x1 as 5 x2 as 11 and x3 as 4 you will be getting the value of this z max so we'll be getting the value of z max is equals to 281 in this case and that's what we have got the self observation slide wherein we have I've given you two questions uh this is uh, you can check it here the uh, actually it's not a maximization we have to keep it as optimize optimize similarly here also you can check it as optimize at that case and then one equality and then you can go ahead and check this answer if you're uh, going to get the answers as uh, please write me in the comment section if you are not getting still write me in the comment section so that i can help you out Thank you. Happy learning.